Today we're going to be talking about the vacuum system. Now, I'm going to try and keep the discussion as generic as possible so it can apply to a broad range of airplanes. But the picture you have in front of you on your screen is from a 150 POH. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it's almost identical to a 172. Again, I'm going to try and keep the following discussion as generic as possible just so you have a basic idea of what the different components do within a vacuum system. Always, though, always, always, always refer to your own POH for your own particular airplane you're going to be flying. Okay, so first let's take the system apart and look at it piece by piece. You, now, when you're looking at any system of a good design, there are typically four things you look for. What's doing the work? What's the work being done on? What protects the system? And how do I monitor the health of the system? So in this case, what's doing the work is a pump, an engine-driven vacuum pump. Now, in my POH, it doesn't say how it's connected to the engine. More likely than not, it's somehow connected to the crankshaft. Regardless, it's an engine-driven pump. Now we ask ourselves, well, what's in place to protect our system in case anything should happen to it? Well, we have a vacuum relief valve and an air filter for that. The relief valve, as the name suggests, is in place to get rid of any excessive pressure that might build up in the lines. For example, if the pump is just working way too hard for its own good. The air filter, well, it's an air filter. We don't want any contaminants entering the lines of the system because that may create choke points in the lines, preventing air from, from flowing freely through them. So let's take a quick recap now. We've talked about what does the work in the system. That would be the engine-driven fuel pump. And we've also talked about what's protecting the system, the vacuum relief valve and the air filter. That's great, but we can't see these things in the cockpit. So we need a way to monitor the health of the system. And that's where the suction gauge comes into place. All the suction gauge is doing is measuring the pressure differential created by that pump. Now for the 150, the normal operating range is 4.4 to 5 point, correction, 4.6 to 5.4. So all we need to do as pilots is make sure that it's in the green, or in other words, in the normal operating range. Now let's consider what the work's being done on. In this case, we have the attitude indicator and the heading indicator. I'm not going, I'm not going to go into details about gyroscopes and their properties. We can save that for another day. I just want you to understand how all this airflow we've been talking about actually spins these gyros. A decent analogy would be that of a windmill. In a windmill, air is your working fluid, just like in a vacuum system. And as the air exerts forces on the fans, those fans, or sorry, on the blades of the windmill, those blades begin turning. The same concept goes with the gyroscopes and the attitude indicator and the heading indicator. You have these little buckets in those gyroscopes, and when the air exerts a force on those buckets, they begin turning those gyroscopes, if I'm not mistaken, up to 10,000 RPM, even higher. I'm not sure of the exact numbers. And anyways, then... All that air needs to go somewhere, right? So then it's just vented overboard through the overboard vent line. So a quick recap of what's going on in your vacuum system. The vacuum pump pumps air through an air filter. It passes through the attitude indicator and heading indicator, which spin the gyros. At the same time, the monitor, the health is being monitored by the suction gauge. If the pressure gets too high, at least we have a vacuum relief valve to protect the system in that, in the event that may happen. And then the air is just over, is just vented overboard. With all that said, let's now consider what we'd expect to see on the suction gauge when we're at a low power setting, for example, while we're taxiing, or at a high power setting during our run up. Now, when we input a low power setting, 1000 RPM, to taxi around, for example, we're not demanding much from the engine. Because we're not demanding much from the engine, the vacuum pump, which is connected to the engine, can't yield a great output. So our suction gauge will be quite low, and we may get intermittent low vac warnings. That's perfectly acceptable while you're taxiing only at 1000 RPM. Remember, that vacuum pump is connected to the engine. So if the engine's not running at a high power setting, the vacuum pump won't yield a great output. But once you do your run-up, 
and you're at a higher power setting, that suction gauge should come into the normal operating range. If it's not, you most likely have a problem with your vacuum system, and it's, then it's up to you as a pilot in command as to whether or not you want to continue the, 